Welcome back to Realism Overhaul. Today we are launching Icarus 3 from Launch Complex C in Florida. This design of Icarus is the exact same as the previous episode. Weird drop tanks and all. We actually have a completely new iteration of Icarus, which uh, looks to solve all of Icarus 3's problems. Um, but that will be seen later on this episode. Our brave Kerbal today is Korolev Kerman, the first Kerbal to orbit Earth. And we're actually looking to do the exact same mission today. We have a contract to stay in orbit for a day and a half, or a day and seven hours actually, less than a day and a half. And that seemed simple enough, and Korolev Kerman couldn't wait for the next design to go up and attempt this flight. So we've placed ourselves in low Earth orbit, and now all we have to do is wait out the day and seven, eight-ish hours. So going back to the tracking center and time warping through some things, we also were able to get some crew report science, which is always good. But then we ran into a bit of a warning here that Korolev was beginning to feel drowsy, and well, that's... that's not good. Loading our vessel back up, a Principia bug has taken over the craft. Our CO2 levels are rising, our stress levels are rising, electricity is looking grim, but Korolev looks happy as always. Now, these problems definitely mean we have to call this mission early, and this is about eight or so hours into the flight, if I'm not mistaken. So we overcome the Principia bug first, which is only a problem for 173 on an older version of Principia, which is no longer being updated, so we might switch to 181 soon. After that, we prematurely deorbit and end up losing our engine in re-entry. Uh, which is weird enough, it causes this tail fin issue, which I have to correct manually, and then we also end up almost burning off the cockpit as well, but luckily we can just pitch up to keep that out of the way. As for the other issues, our CO2 levels were rising because the scrubber only lasts for 8 hours, and this is something I didn't know before launching the vessel. Our electricity problem can be rooted in just really low-tech solar panels, although I might do something to make uh, the actual solar panels bigger or actually try to orient the craft uh, before going into time warp to better harness the energy from the sun. The stress level isn't really something I can do anything about yet. So we came down from re-entry, approaching touchdown, and, well, the tail fin switched back again, and I honestly don't know how. I end up correcting us to land with our wheels on the ground, however the wheels decided they were a trampoline today, causing the death of Korolev Kerman and Icarus 3 as well. I'm so sorry then Ninja 24 on the Discord, I really did not want this to happen to Korolev, but it is what it is. We then spent the remainder of 1963 constructing Icarus 4, an updated, upgraded version of Icarus, and another ITV. Uh, this happens to be the seventh ITV launch. Believe it or not, all six launches beforehand have not returned science successfully. So we are looking to launch this one up and collect that 24-hour advanced biocapsule experiment science which will get us about 40 science. Now there is more to this mission than simply putting it up there and waiting. No, we have another plan for this satellite as well. So immediately after we get this into low Earth orbit, Icarus 4 is on the launch pad waiting to launch. And roughly 23 and a half hours after orbital insertion of ITV-7, Icarus 4 lifts off of the pad with a brand new Kerbal, Obama Kerman from Bon Hat on the Discord. And we are actually attempting to launch on the same plane and rendezvous with the satellite. That's right, we have a contract to do orbital rendezvous. And with this new redesigned version of Icarus, we have the RCS balanced out and centered for orbital maneuvers. 
and we have a, an AJ-10 mid-series rather than the RD-0105. Um, and the benefit of this is no longer needing any strange drop tanks. And also, this AJ-10 has unlimited ignitions, which make orbital maneuvers possible. We are now able to use Icarus in orbit, and we're now able to do more things with it than just having it sit up there. So we can rendezvous with things, hopefully. At least that is the plan. So at this point, we have reached our final stage of the rocket, and we are on the same plane as ITV. And taking a look in the map view, we can see how close we're going to get um, to ITV on just the orbital insertion alone. our engines it looks like we have a fantastic approach there's only one small correction that's going to be needed to be done and other than that this is pretty much a launch to rendezvous and i was extremely happy with this uh, the trick for getting this in timing was uh, I, I ran a few simulations to come up with it uh, but essentially for low earth orbit when the satellite was pretty much right above or around Texas, we then launch the uh, vehicle that's attempting to rendezvous, and it will end up pretty much in the same space, which was freaking awesome. So now all we have to do is wait another orbit and a half or so until our closest approach, where we will burn target retrograde and drift close to this satellite, completing a rendezvous contract for the first time this series. Now we are approaching our closest approach, getting ready to burn our AJ-10. We ended up being just a few seconds late with the ullage, but nonetheless, we relight the AJ-10 for a second time and kill our momentum relative to the target. I will simply orient ourselves and use translation and attitude to push ourselves close to the satellite. And right now, this is this is just a very, very cool spectacle for me. I didn't expect, well, it to go this, this simply after all. Well, now we did have, well, many failures before this uh, that we're standing on the shoulders of but nonetheless, I was very excited about the prospect of this. We ended up drifting, and I realized a little bit too late I was on fine controls, and we almost gave it a little bit of a boop, but we ended up slowing down just in front of it. Now, if the IVA for this cockpit wasn't screwed up, you best believe I'd be looking at the internal view of this satellite through the cockpit, and I'm kind of jealous of what uh, Obama's looking at right now. About two to three hours into the flight, Icarus 4 is looking to test the maneuverability of it uh, relative to another target in space. So we decide to do some pitch, some yaw, and then orient ourselves to the side before pushing back away from the satellite, getting ready for our retro burn. Because uh, we do not want to stay up here in orbit for very, very much longer considering what happened with the previous launch. So you're looking to complete this rendezvous contract by returning home safely.
So at this point, we have launched to low Earth orbit, rendezvoused with a satellite, maneuvered around it a little bit before pushing back and successfully performing our retro burn. Now all that's left is to re-enter Earth's atmosphere safe and sound. After successfully re-entering Earth's atmosphere, I'm almost glad to see the ocean instead of the land because these, these water landings are, well, much more reliable. I can't say I really trust the landing gear much, but we have no tailfin issue this time as we get ready to splash down and we do a little bit of a skip. I believe at this point I was actually spamming the parachute, which did not deploy, but luckily we didn't need it. So next episode, we will be returning the ITV from orbit and seeing what we can do from there. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and peace out. Would it be cool?